Welcome back. Morrisville Natatorium, Coach Corey here, MRDC Rip Fest. Today, I'm going to go over briefly with you the seven different forms of rotation. These are the seven different ways that we can generate rotation around our somersaulting axis, which is our transverse axis. That transverse axis is the axis that goes through our hips. If I took a pole, entered through my right hip, came out my left hip, kind of like at the playground, when you're on the bar, flipping around the bar, that's your transverse axis. So for us to be able to generate rotation around that, there's seven different ways we can do that. I like to remind my divers of the three different laws of motion um, in the first place. The law of inertia, um, anytime an object is in motion, it remains in motion until acted upon by an outside force. A lot of that has to do with our lineup. Um, force equals mass times acceleration, how much we can put in to get out and then we have our action reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Um, and that's one of our main forms of rotation. Um, the most powerful form of rotation, the first one here is called eccentric thrust. Eccentric thrust is literally rocket science. That is when the diver gets their center of gravity outside of the body. And then we have the force line tangent to the outside of our somersault which is going to be through our hips now when the force of the board goes through our hips with this weight distributed out here center of gravity shifts then we are going to get tumbled through very quickly the most powerful form eccentric thrust okay that's what we call 90 90 position on our front and inward takeoff um, the next one that i like to talk about is transfer of angular momentum now in baseball pitchers have a very unique and large windup, and what they are doing is they're trying to make the largest arc possible so that they can take as much momentum built up in that arc and distribute it into the ball so they can throw it faster. Kind of the same thing in diving. If you're on your front takeoffs, you want to create the largest arc possible, and you want to have a long lever as long as possible with those arms. So on our front, we want to start that throw from way back here and it continues all the way through transferring that angular momentum into the somersault um, and all of that momentum is is uh, maintained in magnitude and direction first somersault most important somersault another one that we already mentioned was action reaction one of our laws of motion for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction if i want to jump up i'm going to push down if i want my feet to go up and back I'm going to push it down and forwards, and I get equal and opposite reaction, okay? So that is very important. And remember that all of our rotation is only developed while we're still in contact with the board. All rotation is developed while we're still in contact with the board. So those, that foot action, very, very important. And every category of dive is named after its direction of foot push, action, reaction, okay? Um, now we have double A on, action, reaction, action, reaction, on our backs and reverses. When we get to that upper back C position, the initial action, reaction that's going to happen, and please understand that when we reach through vertical, we are going to be able to put more force back into the board so we can generate more action, reaction from the feet. So as soon as those feet come up, that's the first action, reaction. Now the second action, reaction is when we take the arms and throw directly back straight forward on our backs and reverses. That action up here is directly reflected below the center of gravity. Directly reflected, equal and opposite. Boom! So when you throw your arms straight back, your legs come up faster. That is double AR, okay? Next form of rotation, the fifth one, complementary. This is when we want to chase 360 degrees. So when we're throwing, we want to continue throwing we don't want to grab the somersault on the front side of the body we want to continue chasing as long as we can before we make a connection if you're doing a front four and a half somersaults on 10 meter check it out in slow motion you'll see that the divers do not grab and make connection in their tuck until they're through an entire somersault so they're actually at about 420 degrees when they connect on a front four and a half so that is that complementary. That also works when you're throwing and chasing past your pikes on your fronts and inwards. Don't throw to your pikes. Throw through your pikes 
and then that action of coming back in will actually give you a little bit more rotation. So if you're not necessarily getting your back one of that pike yet, that complementary action might actually help you finish that and get it vertical. The next one's angular momentum. That is called lean in layman's terms. If I were to lean forward away from my base of support and not stop, I would continue to rotate and land flat on my face. If you go up on the 10 meter and you want to do a death drop and you turn backwards, when you fall backwards, you will rotate, okay? We try to stay away from that angular momentum. On tower, we have to use some of that because we don't have all the same action reaction. And we have to tip on tower to get some of our safe distance. And the last one, which is on tower, is run and trip. That is when the divers run to the end of the tower, their feet move approximately 12 degrees out in front of their shoulders and upper body, and they will trip over the end of the tower. Kind of like if you're running through the woods and you could not see a log on the ground, it was covered up with a bunch of leaves, and you were running and your feet hit that log, you would rotate. Those are the seven different forms of rotation. And when we're looking at these as a coach and as an athlete using the TiVo, please understand that 70% of all of these actions we can see so we can coach. 30% of these actions we cannot see. I cannot see the divers push down and forwards into the board. What I can see is the coach. It's not the action, but the reaction. I can see the feet elevating and moving upwards and backwards, or I could not see that to be able to tell whether they're using that action reaction. So those are the diff seven different forms of rotation. If you're struggling with any of your uh, op new optional dives that you're working on, your goal dives, take a uh, gander at some of these forms of rotation and look at what you can do on each individual one to get you to that next step for those optional dives. Thank you for joining us here, MRDC. These are the seven forms of rotation. Coach Corey, we'll see you again.